I think the idea of this record featuring all female singers came about uh, when we were finishing up our previous studio album, The Storm Before the Calm. We had five songs completed and I knew we had to have a six track done to fill up both sides of the vinyl. So we had this music piece uh, and I had met Cat Leone from Holy Wars. gave her the song while we were still working on one other piece of music and the song came back and I thought it was just gorgeous. It was kind of a veered away from I think what the rest of the album sounded like. Again I was captivated by what she did on that song and it just seemed like it finished that record up perfectly and started going well maybe this is a nice launch into what comes next. just kind of rolled on from there and started reaching out to lots of female singers that some that I knew some I just uh, took a shot to see if they would be in, wanted to be involved and you know we were blessed and fortunate that uh, quite a few very talented ladies stepped up afterlife really surprised me. Uh, what I mean by that is I honestly didn't know what to expect. You live under the same roof as someone, but I didn't hear her working on the song. She just came in the studio. We had this piece of music and I kind of felt like musically that should be the opening track on the record. As the wife of BIC's curator, Michael Cerevolo, my husband, it's been a really interesting ride to watch him put together this amazing musical um, genius thing that he's done with Beauty and Chaos. As his wife, I get to see all of the backstage, back scenery, kind of all of the pressure things that he's going through when he's trying to get all these different people involved and you know he's writing all the music and then he's giving it to other people to kind of transform into what they consider to be their artistic uh, endeavor for that song. So I think sometimes when I am um, just with him trying to help him figure out all the dynamics of studio and rehearsal times and all the things that he's trying to put together with all these puzzle pieces, it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure to make sure that he has all the, the things that he needs to make sure that he's accomplishing what he wants to accomplish. She has a, a definitely sweet voice in when she sings in this type of way and the layers and her and Michael Rosan work together real well and uh, just like the, the first song I think this is going to be a highlight of this record and it certainly starts uh, starts the the feel and the the vibe that I really wanted it's really it's wow it's really hard to put into words because it's really about a near-death experience and I've been obsessed with near-death experiences since I died when I was 18 years old and um, I became a big fan of Lorna Byrne who is a woman that speaks to angels and she can see angels and I discovered her about six years ago in my life and it really started talking to me about everybody on this planet is going to die and no matter what your religion is no matter if you're an atheist or what we're all going to have this experience in one way or another and some people have been granted the privilege to come back and talk about it and about what they experienced and so I, i'm greatly influenced by watching those videos of people that have had these um from you know going to heaven or going to hell so afterlife really for me to write the song was about 
I'm what I'm hoping will be and has been an experience that I've had in my life that's another otherworldly experience that is not in earth and about what we experience every day here as human beings but talking with angels and seeing what the next step is where is the next thing that you go to I love the fact that he is so supportive of female musicians. You know, when we started dating 30 years ago as an all-female heavy metal band, and there just wasn't a lot of guys back in the 80s that really supported girls in bands, and I was very lucky to meet my husband and, and have somebody in the music industry that actually supports female musicians and, and has always been the same. There's not been a, a time in his life when he has not been that person. So to watch him do what he's done with Behind the Veil, which is kind of putting it in like a little bit of a box not to have male vocalists too this time in Beauty and Chaos, I think is a real challenge and something that he has stepped up to the plate and really pulled off. I love the songs. My publicist was working with Elena. I looked into some of the things that she's done and it was it's like, wow, she was an amazing talent. So I just took a shot, reached out to her, uh, and thankfully she wrote back. And I think maybe it was the Italian, my Italian descent and her being Italian, we, we kind of connected. Hi, I'm Elena Alice Fossi. I'm Italian, and if anyone knows me there, it's thanks to Kirlian Camera. When I wrote the lyrics for The Kiss of the World, I had in my mind the kiss of Judas. So you can easily realize that the section is the axis on which the theme of the song centers around. Uh, it might appear as a love story that ends badly, but actually the betrayed lover, which finally opens his eyes, represents humanity that feels the duty uh, to evolve. Um, is no longer willing to accept the blackmail of a so-called elite society that wants to scare them uh, into submission. Uh, there's a strong idea of change, of social education, of breaking up to a world that has been uh, emptied uh, of any identity, which has led to exhaustion and uh, self-destruction and which now wants to rebel. The Kiss of the World, I think, was uh, came together really easy, and uh, I think she's just a total pro, and kind of a, a social commentary, or her view under it, which hidden in the layers, like when you peel back, I think, lyrically, what she did on the surface, and as you peel it like an onion and go below it, you kind of see that it, it, it has a, certainly a deeper meaning.
I've known Pinky for quite a while. Um, she's done some stuff off and on through the years with uh, Human Drama, which was the band I moved to Los Angeles with, and I'm in and out of being involved with them, but still dear friends. I think a few years ago, we actually were doing something in Silver Lake at Wacko's, kind of a little, uh, not open mic, but just kind of a poetry reading and, you know, guys would guitars and I think Michael Rosan actually played pedal steel and Johnny had invited Pinky to come down and it just struck me again that she just had a, a fantastic voice. Hi, my name's Pinky Torzo and the song that I did with Beauty and Chaos is called Not Your Fault. Not Your Fault is about um, my situation of having to uh, come to terms with someone very close to me who is struggling with substance abuse. And, you know, having to come to the realization that I can't make them stop and it's something they have to do on their own and, and my job is to be supportive and love them and unfortunately detach with love, which is very difficult to say or admit <laughs> and even more challenging to do. I think if you listen lyrically, I, I think it's one of the more personal songs on the, uh, the album. And uh, it might even have the, you know, dare I say the most commercial hook in it, but Again, really happy that after all these years that I got to work with Pinky. Uh, the timing of this song and, and of Michael Cervallo reaching out to ask me to do this was really just so perfect. Um, was when I was in the trenches of dealing with this and it really helped to get me to, pr to approach my situation completely different from, you know, the other side, basically. Instead of with anger and frustration um, and blaming, it was more understanding and compassion. She was actually in the R.E.M. Losing My Religion video, and I think as soon as you play anything that sounds like a mandolin, uh, it starts being, oh, Peter Buck, R.E.M., which is really not in my wheelhouse or anything. Uh, and she's like, oh, I thought that's why you sent it to me, because I'm actually in that video. And it was just a weird little thing, that a funny story. So uh, once I told Kat Leon from Holy Wars uh, that I was doing this record with all female singers, she was like, I have this girl that you really need to hear and let me make the introduction. So she introduced me to, to Whitney and uh, Whitney came by and we, we met, we hit it off instantly. You know, we have a lot of musical elements in common and she's like, well, what are you thinking of doing? And it's like, I threw a pretty wide swatch of uh, a description. I said, I think this record's going to be somewhere between Bjork and Bauhaus. I was born and raised in Westchester County, New York, and I grew up in a family of music. My great-grandfather was a vaudeville singer and dancer, and my grandmother used to dance with the Marx Brothers. You 
Michael is really great in this way that he brings teams together, songwriters together, and the results of that collaboration is what makes Beauty in Chaos such an incredible project. I had seen her video for her Incantation and I, I just thought it was very cinematic and uh, you know she, Whitney has a, a striking you know persona and really captivating and the whole team she worked with on that video uh, I thought was just like you know fantastic so we were lucky to get her entire team, the Gab team, uh, to work with us on doing Orion. She had the concept of let's do something that's a bit cosmic and we kind of took this little superhero approach to it in a way and you know with Tish with the wings and Whitney just commands attention on that video. I'm really, again, really proud of that when I thought that was a, a great thing to, you know, the debut, the first thing to come out from that record, because like I said, it really, it, it's kind of, I hate to say typical beauty and chaos, but it does include all those elements that I enjoy. People that hang out with Michael Cerevello tend to be pretty cool. He surrounds himself with great people. He, tr he attracts great people, uh, and uh, he, and he, yeah, he's a great guy, and he's extremely talented. Michael's appreciation for the arts and bringing highly creative people together for the music that he curates is really something special. The video concept was actually sparked by a stone chess piece that we found. So they superimposed us in a hyperspace that was unrecognizable. The story revolves around narcissism and abuse. It's really cool that our visual team was able to encapsulate this in a game of chess where there's master and puppet and it's like looming over us and I think that fits the story really well. Cynthia's actually quickly become one of my favorite singers. I think she's just got an amazing voice and it, it kind of all happened uh, differently. Uh, not quite as how I expected to be introduced to her. You know, being the wife of Wayne, one of my favorite singers and guitarists, you know, Wayne and I have become friends and he's done quite a few things with Beauty and Chaos. When we were doing the remix album, I had heard Cynthia's version, a little mandolin track she had did of a, a Smith's cover, and I thought, wow, she's got a really nice voice. So we were trying to do some, not just remixes, some re-envisions, so we stripped back uh, the delicate balance of all things and uh, sent it to him with the idea of her, I thought, adding some background vocals to it where, you know, maybe her doing some of the harmonies to what Wayne had done. Uh, and they sent back the track to it and she had kind of taken over the lead part and Wayne became backseat and it was, you know, wow, it was, it was perfect. You found the key to her drawer Her promises to take the red so she wore Hi, my name is Cynthia Hussey. I have been invited by Michael Cedavolo to join this lovely project, Behind the Veil, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about myself and how this collaboration came about. Although I don't come from a family of artists, I think I've, I've always had not the talent, but the vocation for art. I've always loved painting and drawing, dancing, acting. 
When Michael first sent me the music for what later would become Open One Heart, he told me, listen, if you don't like this, we'll find you something else. Don't worry. When I first played it, I could not believe what I was hearing because that music was so perfect. It was so me. It felt like Michael got into my brain and my heart and really... I told him this, that he's got a very special talent of matching the artists he works with, with the music he makes. And he's got sensibility, extraordinary sensibility for that. She's got a unique style, like her phrasing, I think is a little lazy. And I mean that in a compliment. It's just, it, it kind of pulls behind the beat and uh, she's got a gorgeous accent. And it, it just, I think works. And, uh, you know, when we wrote this, the, the music, I knew it was gonna be perfect for her. And she came back with some really uh, beautiful lyrics and what became uh, Open Wound Heart. I'm so happy and so thankful uh, for Michael's trust you know, to invite me to be part of this, and it's crazy, life's crazy, <laughs> I keep saying this, you know, like, oh, yeah, thank you, it's fantastic. I've known probably Betsy, maybe even longer than I've known my wife. Uh, when Human Drama moved out here from New Orleans, we started, there was a, a great kind of dark wave goth scene based around a club in downtown Los Angeles called Scream. And we used to play there probably once a month. And Betsy fronted a band at that point. I think they were from Phoenix or in Arizona. Uh, cattle wall and uh i remember going you know she's got a great voice and it definitely different her phrasing and she didn't sound like a lot of people I'm Betsy Martin, and I was in a band called Catterwall back in the late 80s, early 90s. Now I'm in a band called Permachine. I met Michael Cervello through Kevin, who met him through Michael Rosan. So there's two Michaels, Michael Cervello, Michael Rosan, Michael C, Michael R. Music inspired me because the music was so heavy and dirty that I was like, ah, this is a meteor storm of emotion and everything. And I, it just compelled me to make some kind of, oh, and then at the end of the song, it totally gives you this release of all the turmoil and everything that's going on and coming at you. That's what it felt like. Things coming at me. And then it was all okay. This song has that guitar uh, bass element that's, you know, has this weird late 90s or early 2000s vibe to it. And then Bessie does her thing over the top of it. And uh, I think it wraps the record up in a, a really nice way. I think being that there's not a massive cast of characters involved, massive cast of musicians involved, let's say, helps things stay pretty consistent and cohesive. It's mostly Michael and I. Sometimes we'll have Tish involved. Sometimes we'll, we'll have Dirk uh, play drums and the material. 
but the majority of the material is generated by Michael. And I really try to make sure that it's generated by Michael, you know, as much as possible. Michael Rosan, my dear friend, uh, and basically my partner uh, in crime in, in this thing, uh, is, is key and paramount to, to this. I mean, the guy is world class and he makes me, pushes me and makes me better. He knows theory and he knows this stuff. He'll sit there and, you know, on this, we'll go back, oh, you're playing a, an 11th with the 7th on top. And it's like, shoo, over my head. But, you know, sometimes I go, yeah, that's what I was working on. That's what I, of course I did. And as you fight to stay the vocal performance is, is exceptional to start with. Um, the lyrical content, what she's talking about, is like, is beautiful, intense, meaningful. It has some gravitas, some depth to it. Um, so that was working the remix was trying to figure out how to emphasize that, put the emphasis on that, not just a bunch of like fun sounds flying around, but to try to keep keep the intensity that she had built by writing those lyrics and telling that story. My name is Benley Jones. I'm a recording artist from the UK, but I'm pretty much a child of the world. At this point, I started my career as a remix producer when I was 17. I moved into composing and songwriting when I was 19. At 23, I got my first record deal. And at 24, I released my first album and my debut went to number three in Japan. And I've been traveling the world since then. <laughs> It was actually through Ryan and Jamazine that me and Michael got introduced. The incredible thing about Ryan as a music journalist is that he covers so many genres of music. When I first heard of Ryan, I was a little bit hesitant, I'm not gonna lie, simply because I loved the song. Loved the love, loved the song. But we had a chat, me, Michael and Whitney, as to what direction the remix should go in. And with Whitney having um, a pop electronic and dance background too, um, she wanted to utilize my experience doing um, EDM and commercial, commercial club music. I think that's what I love most about Michael's Beauty and Chaos project. It just feels like um, a great big hug, um, open arms and a great big hug to everyone that is involved. And I, I feel very, very honored to have played just a small part in Michael's wonderful project. I'm Julian Shaw Taylor, otherwise known as the Singularity. I'd like to thank Michael for involving me in this whole process because I got to meet a lot of great people. And Michael Rosan, the producer, does a spectacular job of all that stuff. And obviously, you know, I'm thrilled to be included on something with John Fryer, who's one of my big heroes, and Wayne Hussey, of course. And working with such great vocalists like, like Tish, Michael's wife, is a fantastic vocalist and a great songwriter. So for this one, I did, um, Pretty much a straightforward heavy rock electro stomper. Then with Pinky Terzo, I feel like that's a great electro pop single. And Elena Alice Fossey from Curly and Camera, whose voice is just mellifluous and it's wonderful. Working on that remix was very interesting for me because I have no idea what she's talking about. So I probably cut the Italian words in half to fit into the remix. 
And then, of course, Cynthia's song. I mean, her voice is like angels singing in one's ear. And she reminds me a little bit of Cocteau Twins. So I let her sort of play with it. And I, I brought in my friend Alan White from Morrissey's band to play guitar, because instead of being a waltz like the original, because I, as I say, I never heard the original before I started working on the remix, I turned it into a glam stomp, like maybe T-Rex might have done, or some, you know, a kind of, Bowie-esque thing and, and Alan was perfect for that so you know it's been a great pleasure to work on Further Behind the Veil with Michael and Beauty and Chaos awesome stuff the first thing I think I always think of when I open up the song and start looking at what's there is I'm trying to find for me where the beauty lies within the particular song and in this particular song which is Open Wound that features vocals from Cincha um, to me the song was all about the chord shapes uh, they're very beautiful chord shapes and I also really really like the way Cincha presents the vocal There's something to me um, very special about someone whose English is almost a second language. Uh, a lot of vocalists, they, have, they bring something new to the table because they're expressing and they're emoting the lyrics with this accent mix in as well and it gives it that extra bonus, if you know what I mean. Artists like Astrid Gilberto or Vanessa Paradis or Carla Bruni or even Sophia Loren or Brigitte Bardot, I mean, they all, when they sing in English, they have a, a, they have a special accent that, that uh, I think is, is uh, really special. I spent a long time with the vocal treatments, getting the delays just the way that I felt they should be and getting the harmonies to all sing the way they should, but it's such a beautiful vocal as you can hear. I really enjoyed it and uh, it's always a challenge as I said, but I love working with uh, these Beauty and Chaos remixes. What I think is great about Beauty and Chaos uh, in general, is the pairing of these cinematic musical landscapes with incredible vocalists that each one just seems to fit the mood of the music perfectly. And so in the case of Orion, that vocalist was Whitney Ty, and her and I happened to be working on a record together. My take on the song was to imagine it as a angstier, grittier song and um, kind of playing off of a shared admiration that Whitney and I have for 90s grunge bands like Alice in Chains and Soundgarden and such. In order to do that, I enlisted the help of some friends of mine. I brought in uh, Derek Abrams and Jake Corlang in to play bass to kind of uh, realize the vision that I had for the song and it wouldn't have been possible without them. Every singer in that's been involved in Beauty and Chaos always writes their own lyrics. The lyrics that came back from each of them were just really deep and uh, sort of open-ended. You know, I always feel the best songs are one that the listener could put themselves into and it's not so obvious what the song is about even if it's not at all what the singer was writing about as long as the listener can go 
I know what they mean by that. This is what it means to me. Elena, Tish, Whitney, Cynthia, Pinky, and Betsy, I, I can't, uh, words don't describe. I'm a fan of each of these ladies and I implore uh, everyone that you know, has listened to this record uh, to, to dig down into what each of them have done outside of this because they're truly uh, magnificent artists and have a, a gorgeous body of work. jumbled but I think he can pull some stuff out of that.